let's have a conversation about social justice. We hear this word all the time. It's thrown around, but do we really know what social justice is? Here to shed some light on social justice matters and to help us to distinguish the difference between that and some of the other terms we hear is FAMU Law Professor Leroy Purnell. Welcome to Legal Connections. Thank you for joining us on Legal Connections, Professor Purnell. What My is pleasure. social justice? Well, I think uh, the, the, the term social justice as it's used currently is a way of, uh, uh, of describing a, a, a movement that's uh, essentially egalitarian. It looks at uh, equity, access, uh, participation, and individual rights um, as a basis for, uh, for, for struggle uh, in our society, uh, in in many ways, it is sort of the uh, the outgrowth of what we used to call civil rights uh, and, uh, and 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 equal access combined together. So that we social justice is broader than the, than the initial concept of civil rights, uh, since it looks at multiple aspects in our society in terms of trying to uh, obtain equal treatment for all. Okay, can you talk a little bit about our rights, our First Amendment right to protest peacefully versus uh, some of the, the hate speech and violent protests that we've seen? Can you just help us to draw the line? Sure, I mean, we, one of the hallmarks uh, of our uh, democracy, our republic, is the concept of free speech and free speech being the ability to uh, give voice to your uh, political uh, uh, concerns and to be free from governmental uh, oppression of, uh, of expressing those views. Uh, free speech has been certainly guaranteed within the, within the Bill of Rights. It's been reinforced by every Supreme Court, uh, uh, has been strong in its support of the concept of, of, of free speech. But free speech is not unlimited. Free speech does not mean speech without responsibility. Uh, so that we, we, there are some uh, limitations. I mean, the, the, the classic one that you learn, you know, almost the first, uh, first semester in law school is the, the old statement that uh, free speech does not mean the freedom to shout fire in a crowded theater. And you may remember that one. Right. Uh, because there's responsibility. Uh, free speech does not include the right to cause harm. Uh, and uh, so when we get to concepts like hate speech, uh, hate speech is a, uh, is not protected. Uh, it, it is speech that is designed uh, and has the intent to cause uh, or to encourage others uh, to cause harm uh, based on impermissible factors such as race, gender, religion. Um, and so it is, this, it is the violence aspect uh, that is the consequence uh, and the intentional consequence of the speech uh, that makes it hate speech and is not protected. Okay, and we've seen a lot of discussion around um, violent protests, you know, especially in the wake of George Floyd's murder and uh, property that was damaged and, you know, and, you know, the outcry. And so, you know, the, the line that people are drawing, you know, and some of the discussions are, you know, because you're angry doesn't give you the right to destroy property. Um, and then, of course, there's a counter argument, you know, to deal with why people are angry instead of criticizing right, them right. for destroying people. So it's just, it's, um, it's, a, it's an interesting discussion. And what are your thoughts about that? Well, I think, I think the biggest mistake that's made and made for all kinds of reasons that we probably don't even have time to, get, to go into is to paint everybody with the same brush mm -hmm. uh, so that you have people who are legitimately uh, protesting uh, their views and their treatments, uh, expressing their anger, uh, expressing their concern and their desire for change. That doesn't automatically... Uh, equate with those who are expressing views or claiming to express those views in ways that are not legally acceptable. Mm -hmm. 
So if you take a peaceful protest and you throw in three people who decide that they aren't going to protest in a peaceful manner and want to be uh, destructive, uh, you, it, it's a mistake to, to label the entire protest then as a violent protest. The entire protest is not a violent protest. It's those individuals who decided to go beyond what was permitted uh, to engage in violence. And uh, it, it doesn't speak also to the content of the speech. Uh, the actions are not necessarily a, uh, uh, an embodiment of the, of the speech itself. So we can't say because some people are uh, engaged in illegal and harmful actions that the message is a, is a hateful message. That is not necessarily true. When we talk about hate speech, we're talking specifically about individuals who with their words uh, and actions are trying to harm others or encouraging people to harm others. Uh, and we know all the classic examples of that from hate organizations and hate groups. Uh, but again, that doesn't include all protesters. And I think it's dismissive to try to say that, that, a, 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 that all protesters are engaged in hate speech or engaged in illegal activity. And there is a difference between uh, uh, speech uh, protected speech and illegal activity, uh, mm -hmm. even outside of the context of, of hate speech. So that, uh, yes, there, there are instances where there can be, uh, and our country is full of examples from its very beginning of civil protests uh, and even protests that involve breaking the law. And it doesn't mean that breaking the law is necessarily permitted, but that doesn't necessarily mean it is hate speech either. Uh, so that, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, they, they, they broke the law when they threw the tea into the Boston Harbor, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the, uh, we've seen a lot of talk lately about, well, people are attacking statues. Mm -hmm. Well, statues have been attacked from the very beginning of, of, of time when statues were made. Mm -hmm. uh, we, that's where we get the concept of burning something in effigy. Uh, all those things have deep historical roots and aren't necessarily, it doesn't make them hate speech. Um, it doesn't mean that you have the freedom to do, destroy property, no. But sometimes uh, uh, people, in order to make a point, uh, will engage in some level of civil disobedience uh, in order to push the system towards better and, and more transformative change. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on protesters being charged with felonies? Um, just uh, whole... Well, again, you have to you, you have to look at it on a case by case basis. To take a blanket approach of saying we're going to charge protesters mm -hmm. uh, because they're protesters with felony is nothing but uh, speech uh, suppression. Mm -hmm. We've seen that happen uh, throughout time, uh, and using the criminal justice to try to chill uh, the expression uh, the, the expression of grievances. Uh, is uh, impermissible and it is it is contrary to uh, the principles uh, of this country. Now, if you want to get past simply uh, uh, pouring something like felonies over all protesters, you can look at individual actions. Mm -hmm. Again, if in the middle of a protest someone decides to take a gun mm -hmm. uh, and shoot someone, you deal with that person. It doesn't necessarily speak to the whole protest but it speaks to the action of that one individual uh, or, or how a number of, of individuals there are. So um, I think that uh, one of the tools that have, uh, some of the tools that have been used in the past to suppress uh, legitimate speech and expression of concerns have included using the criminal justice system to charge felonies, to arrest people and not let them out on bail, uh, to deny, uh, uh, illegitimately uh, uh, deny people the right to gather and assemble. All those things are, uh, I think, offensive to our uh, basic notion of free speech and, and, uh, uh, and, and equity. When you look at the social justice movement in our country right now, what do you think is next? Well, I think that uh, what's, what, is, what is clearly rising faster than the horizon is next. Uh, sort of in our, in our face is going to be the election. Uh, so the importance of people voting, two things with, with the election. One, the importance of people voting. And secondly, the diligence 
that we uh, have to uh, pay to our voting system to make sure it's not corrupted. Um, you know, there's been, unfortunately, instances in the past of uh, voter suppression, uh, of uh, manipulating voting results, of voting uh, interference. Uh, we have to remain vil uh, vigilant like never before mm -hmm. uh, to see that those things do not affect the election outcome. But this is a very important election coming up at all levels, not just at the top of the ticket, all throughout the ticket. Mm -hmm. Indeed, all elections are important. But uh, that clearly is um, the embodiment of, of where social justice is going uh, and, and of equal, uh, somewhat equal importance, although again, the election is, 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 is looming large, but of somewhat equal importance is uh, con continuing the effort to uh, form some type of understanding and partnership with, our, with the business communities. Uh, that they have to be responsible uh, also in terms mm -hmm. of social justice. And that uh, we've seen some companies mm -hmm. uh, get the message and be very proactive. And I think that's what makes this particular set of, of, of concerns and protests so remarkable. Yeah. Uh, I think I've said before, I, 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 with the, uh, the tragic death of, of, uh, of George Floyd, uh, not since Emmett Till have I, have I seen uh, such an event uh, uh, trigger uh, a broad-based response. So we're seeing some response from, from the private sector mm -hmm. uh, because they don't want to lose the, the business and they have uh, a concern. That, that, has to, uh, that type of pressure has to uh, increase and, and be there. We saw it work ultimately very effectively in opposing apartheid. Mm -hmm. uh, and so... Uh, uh, I, I think that uh, um, it, it's not a short uh, fight. It's, it's, it's a long, uh, it's not a short battle. It's a long, it's a long war. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, these things are next, but, but uh, uh, I think that, that uh, what we've seen so far would suggest uh, uh, chances for success. Certainly. Thank you so much for your input. It's always a pleasure to speak with you and hear your insight. Professor Leroy Purnell, thank you for joining us on Legal Connections. Thank you.